Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. This is our review for Greenleaf Season 3, Episode 8. Okay? I hope everybody's having a great Thursday. <laughs> I be having to think, like, what day is it? Uh, Thursday. What, what day y'all gonna see it? Um, everything. If you have not done so already, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel and become a J-Bird. Okay, um, I'll be trying to think of different ways to say it. But anyway, <laughs> become a whole J-Bird and that just means to, you know, be a subscriber, watch the videos, comment on the videos, share, like, and all that good stuff. And do not forget to also hit the notification bell because it lets you know when I have new videos up. Yes, I will be live this Friday, 10 p.m. Every Friday, every Friday, 10 p.m., I will be on my YouTube live, okay? So do not forget to get your questions together and join us because it's always a good old little time, okay? Um, so this episode, I would say this episode was really, really good, okay? That damn Zora, that damn Zora. Oh, she drives me crazy. Anyway, so we see Zora, and she's still leaving. Okay, she's walking down the driveway. You got May follow her in the car like, Zora, Zora, you can't do this, okay? Now, Zora trying to leave, but she can't get out the gate because May's on the gate guard. Like, don't open that gate. Open the gate. Don't open that gate. Open the gate. Don't you open that gate. I am an adult now, but I'm like, it's a weird thing to, like, you don't want to let her be dumb and leave so you like you you don't want to like just let her go because she's 18 but at the same time let a dumbass go out there and get beaten like let it go get be some people we say all the time some people need their ass beat to learn a lesson zora needs her ass beat a little bit more to learn her lesson because i'm hoping with one or two more slaps she will come to her damn sen senses and realize why do you want that boy it's just it's oh it's just so mind-boggling anyway so, but she ain't listening to me. May like, you know, you got your whole life. You know, don't do this, girl. Because at this point, they just think she leaving in general, okay? So, we then see Jacob and Carissa pull up. So, Jacob and, Car and Carissa pull up. They, of course, have to open the gate. But I'm like, guard, man. When you open the gate, why didn't you close it back? Okay? Because if you leave it open, she can get out. Anyway, so when they get there, they're like, what's going on? Like, what you doing? He's... Zora thinks she's going to leave because she's 18 now. But what are y'all doing here? We came here to pick her up. You know, we're going to take her home. I'm not going home. They're like, what? She's like, I'm not going home. Y'all don't want me there. And they're like, no, we came to get you. We decided last night to let you come back home. Like, we're coming to get you, girl. What you talking about? And then they like, you know, the mom like, you know what? Well, you know, well, where are you going? Like, what is your plan? And then here come that boy. That boy Isaiah, that boy who every father wants to beat his ass, okay? And he put up his little light skin ass, pull up. Come on, Zora, hurry up and get in the car. I'm looking like, he like, what are these, what, why are they all out here? Because you are an abuser, and they want her not, not to be with you, because you are a whole abuser, old punk ass little boy. And then Jacob like, oh, hell no, nah. because he realized who it was that pulled up, okay? He like, look. You need to get in your car and go on about the, like, go on, we're going on now, going get, get away from here. And the whole time, Isaiah pulls his phone out to go live on, we're going to see whatever platform he has, okay? And so, yeah, I'm live or whatever, and he like, you know, are you live? Okay, cool. Put it in my face. Put it in my face. Isaiah, he hits girls. I'm like, first of all, Jacob, you need to say it with a bass and voice. He beat women, okay? He beats women. He puts his hands on women. I'm like, he said it too softly, okay? And then, you know what I'm saying? He like, you know what, uh... Oh, shut up, fat, fat ass. I'm like, Jacob, not even fat. He's, he's, he's in good shape, okay? Um, anyway, he, um... Call me an old lady. I'm looking like, and Zora is just like, okay, like pop the trunk. I'm like, Zora, you're an idiot. Oh, now Zora gonna work. Now she gonna raise my pressure, okay? That's gonna happen. So, you know what I'm saying? We have the whole thing going on. Then Charity pull up and she like, what's going on now? You're like, what's going on? Because all you see is a whole bunch of cars and everybody outside. She's like, what's happening? Is that that boy I saying? Boy, I'm gonna whoop your butt. And she's running to the car. I'm like, Charity, girl, calm down. Girl, fall to the hills. So, they like, oh, girls, this is no kind of Charity. 
So, May goes to the door to try to stop Zora from getting in, in the car door. And she's, you know, as Zora's opening the door, May's closing. Oh, lady, stop standing my door. Who the fuck you calling? First of all, you can't talk to my grandma that way, okay? The fact that Zora allows him to treat not only her that way, but her family that way, they should realize there's nothing at this point that they can say that's going to make her not go with him and it's going to take more than them talking to her in that moment to get her away from him and it's a thing of again not allowing her to think we don't care we're gonna let her go but they have to they have to realize like it's it's gonna take a little bit more because he's a he's a he is he didn't talk about father her grandma he's just he didn't beat you so it's just gonna take a lot anyway she like you know you just he beats you like he beats you like why do you want to go with him you just you just don't get it you just don't get it so then Chris is say let me talk to her oh because you have all the answers May for once this is not about you oh when it's about you ma I'm looking like who, who, who are you talking to girl, don't let that eighteen year old girl I will crack your head your mother is what I would have said but I digress anyway you know she tries to level with Zora. Zora, you going girl, he gonna destroy your he gonna destroy your life. You know, I won't allow or I can't allow you to ruin all the hard work I put into, you know what I'm saying, giving you a life that you could lead, you know, as you got older. I I don't want you to destroy that or whatever. And he's going to destroy your life. And Zora is just not listening, okay? Mom, I'm eighteen now. I'm like, she is so dumb. And so Krista, you know what? Here's my phone. You know, take my phone. Remember, they took her phone. Take my phone. Just take my phone. Oh, why? So you guys can track us? And she's like, no. I won't call you. I won't track you. But, you know, take my phone in case you need to call us. Like, just take it so that you have a phone. Come on. She don't have no phone. So she reluctantly, but she, well, she takes it. I'm like, okay, that's one thing. She takes it. Isaiah then takes it for her. And as they're pulling off, he throws it out the window. And when he threw out the window, she looked like, because you realize he, again, the fact that he threw away your only communication to your parents should show you he, girl, he just ain't the one. Okay, he just ain't the damn one. Jesus Christ. So, in the house, Chris is upset. She didn't call his parents and they like, I don't know where he at. Like, he gone here too. He had been here for a couple weeks, but I don't know. Because remember, he is a, like, a recording artist too. Like, he's like singing and doing whatever else. So, he don't have to stay at home. And so they can really go other places and they won't know where they're going. So, you know, when she called his people, like, well, he been for a couple of weeks, but he's not here right now. Okay, okay, we're fine. So then she's like, you know what? I just can't believe I told you that you, your mother, was too hard. I told you that. He like, well, calm down. You know, it's okay. We can go over there. No, you stay here because your anger is just not going to work. You know what I'm saying? You can't. You No. So she tripping all over Jacob or whatever, being mean and rude. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to go in his family house in case they come back because that's what I want to do. Okay? And your violent tendencies means that you can't go because you will only make things worse. Okay? Because your little anger shit ain't working. When May say something like, you know, what well, Jacob was right about something. May, you stay out of this. Okay? Because I would not. I told y'all y'all was rough and I would not have Zora turn out like Faith. And I was like, oh. Faith is dead. Why they keep bringing up the dead sister? I'm like, Jesus Christ. And May like, I cannot believe you were safe. And I'm like, I was shocked too when she said it. I'm like, oh, Lord Jesus. So, you know, <laughs> we see Jacob kind of stop May from like kind of getting to her. Because I think they, was on, <laughs> they were trying to get to her. Okay. Little Lynn Winfield. And so, um, she said, you know what? I'll take you to his people's house so even though you know chris has been a whole asshole to her she still offers to take her over there i would have told him stop and stun nice so we see charity is a whole funeral singing lady now okay she's at the um well she's running late to get to purchase the thing for another funeral and she runs into bishop you know bishop is there now and then you know it's like oh yeah the morning was so much things happened was crazy this morning oh what happened oh you know nothing and she keeps walking and she kind of ignores the fact that her father asked her a question charity girl i am still your father and i'm like because she did kind of just like blow him off like whatever i don't i'm gonna do nothing and she's like dad so she tells him what happened 
he then calls May because again, like you know, since all this happened, why ain't nobody called me? Like, how did my granddaughter like literally run off and no one thought to call me? Like, y'all, this is weird. But whatever. But she told like, you know, it's fine. You know, me and Chris are going over to the parents' house. Like, don't worry about it. Don't you do nothing, okay? Don't you interfere to make nothing worse, okay? Don't do, don't just sit down. Be, you know what I'm saying? It's okay. Me and Chris has it. And then the person like, well, what happened? She said the mother's handling. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's fine or whatever. And I'm like, we don't know about that. Grace. Grace is get that lady out of jail. That lady who killed that who killed her husband. She's getting him and getting her out of jail. Her and Rochelle are together taking the woman home. Okay. And the woman like, you know, I just want to see my I just want to see my kids. Like I want to see my kids. The kids are in child protective services. So Rochelle said, you know, I have a friend's, you know over there i'll call and see what i can see and what y'all i mean girls are like do you hmm yeah you know i have, I, I, I have a friend over there so it's fine but grace still looks shocked like you know i'm saying how do you know so many people and so you know she's real connected here then every day and where and i think it's weird that she's so connected but they don't know anyone that really knows her they don't know nothing about her too much it's like you always is she has these connections and whatever but i'm like it's true we don't know who she is so in the car we see May and Carissa pull up to his family's house or whatever. And so they're not there. They don't see the car. So they're sitting outside just waiting to see what's going to happen. So May says, you know what I'm saying? If you think I did not try everything in my power, you know what I'm saying, to get Faith back on track, and you are so wrong. She's like, you know, May, I'm you know, I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? I was upset. You know, I'm, I'm sorry. What she should have, what she did not say that she didn't mean it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you know, May then says, like, you know, we want to believe that we can fix whatever it is our kids are going through. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes they get away and things happen. And then she says, no, not me. I'm going to get Zora back. I'm going to save Zora. And then she said, you know what? Well, you may not have a choice. And I think, you know what I'm saying? For one, clearly part of the, the issues with Zora... It's because of our parents, you know. Zora was a somewhat troubled child from the beginning. Zora was always a little bit sneaky and underhanded. But you know how they say church kids are, you know, sneaky to get whatever. I am a church grandkid. My grandparents were pastors. Um, so I completely get it. Um, but again, some of her issues are based on her parents. I do feel like at some point or another, her parents were so concerned with themselves or, or even their own issues. Zora kind of just grew up a little bit on her own or even the things that her mama tried to force her to do kind of made Zora feel some kind of way about her mother. So again, you and Zora, you know, you're a part of the reason she's a little bit lost. Okay. It's also that demon dick. She fucking that too, but like two, three, five percent is from the parents so you know i feel like that could be also the reason why carissa feels so bad she feels like i failed as a mother because my daughter out here with a whole abuser and don't get it she's being foolish and i'm gonna get her back but sometimes you have to wait and, and let them fall and and then fall again and then get up on their own two feet don't get up on your two feet get up on, on their own two feet and realize i don't want to keep being falling i want to keep i don't want to keep falling i have to get up and stand up and be tall on my own and be the person my parents raised me to be. and sometimes it might take to you in your 30s trust me i know anyway we then see jacob okay jacob you know he didn't had a little moment or whatever and now he at the church and um i think tasha came you know skanks came in and talked to him or whatever and then he like well yeah it's kind of crazy because no tasha texted him when he was there like hey can you talk whatever so clearly she been calling and texting because he deleted the text so he goes to her office to talk to her at the church and then you know what i'm saying he like look we need to talk what happened that kiss was a whole mistake okay it cannot happen again it cannot happen again okay i am not you know in the place to make you know to do that at all i can't do that you know what i'm saying and you know what i'm saying i can't have like you great you're a great person you know what i'm saying but that's not something i'm gonna choose in my life right now and then she's like oh so it's like me he's like yeah you know i can't you know i can't choose that oh okay and then he like and all you know you have to quit texting me oh you know i just 
I just miss you. And, so I just, and he like, oh, he like, look, you need to pull it. Because she crying. He like, you know, put, I'm your boss. Pull it together. And I'm like, I get on one end how he's coming to her because he like, you should be an adult enough to not like act like we had this whole love affair. Like, but at the same time, Jacob, you allow her to get enough feelings because you kissed her. A whole good ass kiss. Okay, so you got to do what you got to do. Anyway, you know. She's like, you know, I just, I really miss you. I'm saying that nothing seems to work out for me. I seem to always be on the losing end or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And I really like you. He like, look, you know what I'm saying? Cut it out and I pull it together. And at that point, Bishop walks in. Oh, hey, Jacob was on. Oh, my interesting. She like, no, 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 it's okay. You know, she just lost a friend and I was consoling her. It's okay. And you know what I'm saying? But remember, it'll be okay. Yes. It'll be okay. So Bishop and Jacob leave, and then what does she do? Sit in her chair and cry. Cry, 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 cry. That's not nice, Shelly. Anyway, that's what she do. I'm Grace. Grace gets back to her office at the church, and the DA dude is in her office wanting to talk to her. So he basically tells her, like, look, um, I told you, I warned you before at the prison to leave this case alone and you bail her out anyway. You know what I'm saying? If you keep going thing, you're doing going this way, things may, may not look as good. I offered her, you know, a uh, secondary murder in like twenty years. She would get promote like probation in like fifteen. You know what I'm saying? That's the best you're gonna get. You know what I'm saying? She like we don't we don't want that. Well, you know what? You know, if you keep pressing it, you know, it, things might be bad for you. You know what I'm saying? If people knew how you, you know, uh, kicked in your uncle's door, you know, the bad blood to have between y'all, how you were so angry that your daughter was missing, they were, they may not feel that you were such a victim. Okay, they may feel like it was murder, but no, it was self defense. So that's what you say. So he, like, you know what? If you don't walk away from this case, I may bring charges up on you and investigate you a little bit more based on your situation with your uncle. And I'm looking like, how you going? Crooked. This crooked, crooked, crooked. Mm. 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 Okay. Mm. 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 Anyway, then said you will be looked at in the court of public opinion as a person who killed a man who then is now trying to help another woman get off for doing what? Killing a man. Y'all are two killer women killing men. You want all the women who kill men off. And I'm like, he really just, I mean, the man that she killed, is he your cousin? Like, what's going Like, why are you so upset? Lord Jesus, okay? Tell your tell your client to take the deal 20 years and then, you know, uh, for second degree murder. So Rochelle came out, oh, what did he want? Oh, nothing important. She's like, I'm not dealing with that. So we do see that, you know, they have a whole lawyer for the girl. And so she has the lawyer to tell the girl, this is the deal they offered you. And she's like, well, how long would I have to be in prison? Like, when would I be up for parole? After 15 years, like, oh, she's like, my kids will be grown. Like, my kids will be adults if I go to prison for 15 years. I, you know, I don't know. You know, I have to think. And the lawyer, the prick, so like, you know what, what? You got to hurry up. You know what I'm saying? We don't have all this time. You know what I'm saying? I'm busy, busy, busy. She's like, well, if you don't want to be here, you ain't got to be here. Gonna fuck on. Like, well, look, I'll give you till tomorrow. But, you know, we need an answer. So, he leaves. And he even said before he left, you know what I'm saying? The judge on this case is not a fan of the Me Too movement. Meaning, even if she's an abuse victim, he won't care. And I'm like, oh, punk ass. Anyway, um, Rochelle then brings up how she got a visit approved for her to see her kids. And the kids are on their way. So, while she's visiting with the children, Rochelle and Grace have a little conversation. So, Grace is still asked, like, who do you know at CPS that got you this visit? You still don't trust me? She's like, I just want to know, you know, who you know. <sighs> you know, I was a big sister. I mentored these girls or whatever. So sometimes I hit them up for favors because I mentored them. I mentored four girls as a big sister. I say, girl, did you? I wonder was one of them Tasha. I don't know. Anyway, so again, she said she, you know, hit some of her favorites, and that's what kind of where it came from. She's like, oh, okay, you know, that's kind of crazy, or whatever. Yeah, you know, I'm like you. You know, say at times I see myself in low lost souls, and like you, I will fight until the people who kept them down are brought down, are brought down. And Grace looked at her and she said, that sounds like revenge. Well, maybe the DA was right about you. you know what I'm saying because to me, it all just sounds like justice, and I'm like. Grace is seeing again is little parts of her that she don't know. Okay, little itty bitty parts. And so 
Um, the lady come out and say, you know what? I can't do prison. You know, I can't leave my kids. Like, I don't want the deal. And I feel like with Rochelle telling Grace that she used to work for, like, a little big sister organization, Grace maybe may, may look into, you know, who she was back in the day. Because, again, Rochelle don't share much about who she was. And even though we know that Derek did a whole background check, we don't trust Derek, okay? We, we, we do believe that Derek is involved in some kind of way. We just don't know how yet. Anyway... We see Charity at the funeral, okay, and she's consoling the people, the family members or whatever, and Percy look at her doing it, he likes, he like, she know what she doing, like, she over there, like, really, like, she doing great, okay, and so later on, when it's over, whatever, he goes to pay her, I told you, Percy, no, it's okay, he's like, no, you know, it's an honest day's work, excuse me, this, I'm so sorry, excuse me, deserves pay or whatnot, he like, but I want to talk to you, I'm saying, um, you have a call, like, you really know how to talk to people who are grieving, like, you know how to do that, and, you know what I'm saying, I'm thinking about, you know, I've never met anyone who I felt could take over this place, and I feel like you could, because you have a whole knack for it, said, what, me, I oh, know, you know, no, I'm not, you know, I'm not strong enough yet to, you know, do this every day, you know, thank you for thinking about me, and let me know that I'm being seen, but, you know what I'm saying, I'm just not strong enough yet, you know, Charity, you're stronger than what you know. And I said, is Charity going to come up be, be, to be a mortician? Well, she probably wouldn't be a mortician, but she'd be like a funeral director. That's different, because she won't be like with the bodies and stuff. But anyway, she she smiles a little bit because she, I think she do feel like someone needs me for something. And that's all the grace, not grace, that Charity has, Charity has been yearning for, for someone to need her or to want her or to just feel like she's a part of something. So it may be good, who knows? So... We do see, you know, the reason Bishop went to go talk to Jacob. He like, you know, maybe you can call our little cop friend, have him pick up Isaiah, and then we can get Zora back that way. Pop, we can't do that, okay? They are both adults. She left on her own free will. He did not take her. She literally left, and she's 18. Like, we can't stop it, okay? We can't do anything. And he like, you know, uh, no one wants us to do nothing to stop you know what I'm saying you know my wife don't even think i should do anything so just leave it alone you know what i'm saying so do us do, us, do us a favor that go back to Percy's, go back to church or something just get out my face okay just go ahead on and stay out of this and i'm like he going off on bishop then says i have enough to deal with without having to make sure you feel like you are a big help i say who the fuck is you talking to jacob bishop backsmack jacob real quick J jacob is backslap you know what, son? You know what? Carissa was right, okay? Because that, that, that attitude, that, 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 that temple of yours, is not a help to anyone, especially you. And I'm like, okay, Bishop, let him know. You know, and no matter what happened between me and your mama, I'm still your father. So for the second time, he had to remind his children, I am still, your, you can't act like because me and mama ain't together, I'm not your daddy. I'm still that dude, okay? I'm still that man who is your father, okay? And I'm like, and I'm still Zora's grandfather. Meaning you can't just push me out and say, don't, you know, be out of it because, you know what I'm saying, it's just issues with your mom. You can't do that. He like, I ain't gonna have it. You know what I'm saying? And then said, when you remember that, give me a call. And I'm like, pull up, Jacob. So at Isaiah's parents' house, we see they finally pull up. You know what I'm saying? Isaiah pull up, music plays, and he jump out the car. He leaves Zora in the car. And at first, May and Chris, May, no, May, May, let me go and do it by myself. So she goes to talk to Zora. Zora, like, you know, you know, you can't be here, you can't be out here when he comes back. And I'm like, the fact that you know he gonna be upset if your mama there means you shouldn't be with him. But again, she's stupid. You know what I'm saying? Carissa's goal is to how when she was born, you know what I'm saying? But I, I'll give you a minute. What you gotta say in a minute? So she's been like, when you was born, you know, you wasn't crying or fussing or, or, or wailing around, whatever. You just was looking at me. You was looking at me with your, you know, brown eyes or whatever. And it was as if you were just waiting for the world to be your orchard or whatever. Just you wanted to be out in the world. So I tried to prepare you the best I could to be able to go out to the world. And mom, that's what I'm doing. She's like, no, you're not. Like, you don't. You No, you're not. Mom, I have me. I'm like, bitch, you ain't enough. Okay, you ain't. Yeah, it's just you're not. Okay, I just can't. It's just too much. But she apologized. Like she's like, I'm sorry if I, you know, if how I kind of raised your or, or if how I 
prepared you, you know, for life or whatever, made you want to run away. But she then says, I'm going to give you, like, it's your last chance to come home. Like, I'm going to ask you now, do you want to come home? Because if you don't, you know what I'm saying, it's gonna, it, you, you're going to be out here in this world. You're only going to have you and God because he's more stronger than me. But if you come home now, we can work it out. We can make things happen. And she wants to stay and be beaten by that boy. And so Carissa just slowly, painfully has to walk away from her daughter. Like May said, sometimes we want to save them from things that's going on, things that are feeling, and we cannot, okay? It's like wanting to, it's, it's like wanting to heal your child's heart from heartbreak. You can't. You have to let them go through it. You know what I'm saying? You can't heal a broken heart. The same way you cannot force your child to change how they feel about something stupid. They just eventually have to get through the pain, the stupidity, and come back when they see fit. Um, so I'm like, it's just kind of, mm -hmm. So we see Bishop goes back to the house, okay, to May's house, their old house. And he quickly realized that she didn't change all the locks <laughs> into the gate. Like, he can't, like, his little clicker thing don't work to open the gate. The key code don't work to get in the gate. And security had to call up for May to approve him to come in. So he changed the locks and the code. She's like, what do you want, James? I'll tell you what I want. You know what I'm saying? I need you to remember I am still the head of this family. You ain't the head of nothing. So they going back and forth. Talking, talking, talking or whatever. And then, you know what I'm saying? He like, you know what I'm saying? How, you know, you need to still consult me and let me know what's going on with our family. And you need to keep me in the know. Like, you can't just be let, not letting me know what's going on. Like, he like, it ain't no reason that this happened with Zora. And no one contacted. Like, no one called me to tell me that I had to find out. You know what I'm saying? From Charity, who kind of didn't even think to tell him when she walked in. She like, you know, I have to follow up behind your kids and all this going on. I'm too busy, you know what I'm saying, trying to handle them. I'm sorry if no one had a chance to call you and fill you in. Okay, I feel Bishop on this, though. If we're going to still be family, we need to still be family. Like, you, like, you can't call one family member when a crisis happened and then don't call another one who juicy always around solely because of mama and daddy. well no you you call mama and daddy that's what you do anyway so you know um she do like you had you just waited while i found the strength to forgive you and, you know, and take you back we would not be we, we would be together you know as a as a as a unit right now but you could not do that you know what i'm saying and you know he like I just want them to know that I still exist, that I'm still their father and I still exist. They know that, they know that, okay. And you do have my sympathy for not being in the house right now. Oh, brother, sympathy, James. It's a feeling, okay. Sympathy is not mind you. It's a feeling, and I felt what I felt she meant from that was. You may think I don't feel nothing for you, but I do. Even if all I feel is sympathy, it's still a little bit of something I feel for you. And I might, you know, he walked away or whatever. But I feel like in her own way, that's May's way of saying, I'm real pissed off at you. I'm real pissed off at you. And it's a possibility somewhere down the line that I may forgive you. But there's so much muck in this right now, you know what I'm saying? All I have right now is sympathy for you. But that can, it's still a feeling, okay? You, you don't know that. But, you know, it was what it was. So, we see you back at the church. Jacob is, is a little bit calmer now. He can calm down a little bit. And he goes to apologize to Skanks, okay? I was upset. The whole thing with Zora was going on. It was just so much. I was just angry. And I should not have taken my anger out on you. I apologize. I'm, I'm sorry, whatever. I just snapped. Oh, okay. But I'm like, do he not see she packing up her shit? And he like, what you doing? I'm packing, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I should have left when Basie left. I should have stayed here, you know what I'm saying? But I stayed for whatever reasons because I liked you. And now I like your whole lot. And now I have to leave. He like, no, you don't, you don't have to do that. You know what I'm saying? It's okay. You know what I'm saying? Meek said I was just your boss. That was really mean. Uh, you know, you don't, I want you to stay here. No. I'm sorry. I'm leaving. And I I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. He's like, for what? She's like, for everything. So he don't know how she had him sign them papers, okay? And now they are embezzling or doing whatever with their money. And she know 
he don't know. So she was like, I'm sorry because she basically set his ass up. Okay. And he doesn't know yet. Uh, we do see Jacob gets home. And Carissa's there. And she's like in the living room on a couch. And some cover. And she's flipping through like a little baby book. Or memories of Zora. And he walks like, hey, babe. Hey. Yeah. I didn't make dinner. He's like, I'm okay. But how are you doing? Like, is Winky with the bed? Yeah, I just tucked him in. And she's flipping through the book. And flipping through the book. And he's like, you know, so what happened? <sighs> Our right, little girl is gone. Oh, babe. And he goes to reach out to touch her. Like, to touch her, her leg or whatever. Or her shoulder or whatever. And she pulls away. And gets up. And just walks away. Like, don't touch me. I'm, you know, and she, you know, it's a thing with Chris where she's very hot and cold. You know what I'm saying? And I think in, in season one, we kind of seen how she was like that. And I think people understood why Jacob was cheating. Because she seemed like a, like a cold-ass wife. And then things changed. And she became more, like, nice and, like, lovely or whatever. And, okay, they good. But you also can see how it could, it's just a, a hot, cold thing with Chris. And this is weird. Not saying that anything that she did means it was okay for, for Jacob cheating or it was okay for Zora to leave. But you can see how the emotions and the feelings in that house was all over the place. So things, you're just, you know what I'm saying, are not as good as they seem. And now she upset as if something happened to her that she had no control over. And I feel like in, in little ways, she um, allowed them to happen. In, 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 just, in just in little bitty ways or whatever but we see that and um, we do see grace gets home and she's tired and she didn't have this long as day and for the most part i think she's been separate from the whole zora thing because she wasn't there the whole time so um she like sits down or whatever and then uh sophia comes out now earlier in the episode sophia got like a little love binder book story time thing for her boyfriend with like all this, this, these pictures of them of you know when it was happy whatever and him just saying how he misses her and then so she came out of the room and talking to grace like you know what mom i don't want to go to a christian school like i don't want to go to that school she's like okay but you're going to college she's like but zora didn't go but you're not you know you're not zora okay she's like but zora didn't go to college she had to leave or whatever she did she she can just do whatever she wants to do she's like zora is 18 but i'll be 18 soon too mom she's like look you don't have to go to Christian college, but you're going to college, okay? You just, it is what it is. <sighs> okay. S uh, Sophia. I just don't want both of the granddaughters spiraling. But in real life, that's how things go. So, I'm like, I think it's selfish for us to not want things that happen to them like we can't want their lives to be perfect we cannot want them to mess up and, and do dumb stuff because we did dumb stuff so i feel like that's why the show is good because it's showing things that really happen in real life to families even if they in the church it is what it is and the end of the scene is bishop on the porch at percy's and Percy's like you know you can do this and do that and i told you earlier how you know what i'm saying you can you know you were saying how you was okay with y'all being you know divor getting divorced whatever but it seemed like you may not be that way you you know you could either sometimes get out the way of a mac truck or stand in the middle of it. you know you have the, the choice to decide and then we do see bishop praying to his only friend jesus okay and that's how the episode goes up so i hope you guys enjoy put your comments in the comment section um i am jay lee this is jay lee's corner this is jay lee's corner peace it's like love 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 and you